so like um, most people, I have made trade-offs in relationships and career um, without really considering the full cost of those exchanges. I had considered, uh, and I'm sorry, I had a before and after picture of the work I currently do up there, but I, I've misplaced them. Uh, I had considered my body to be principally about being attractive and presentable and rather than a source of physical and emotional wisdom. And when I started prioritizing my well-being, I transformed a, series, a lifetime of back issues and ex in exchange got uh, my life back. So we all have bumps and bruises as well as full attacks on our well-being. Our society is chock full of denial about aging and dying. And out of any large sample, you can find 100% of the population is playing hurt on some level. Um, from birth, we're focused on pleasing our parents, teachers, friends, significant others, bosses, clients, and so on. Even the inquiry, how are you, is most often spoken to clarify that you're available to the other person's agenda. The focus is always on external cues and feedback. Even well-intentioned comments from others can be experienced as trauma. And this, too, contributes to those challenges to your well-being. We're taught, take a pill, uh, hang in there, run through it. Doing what has to be done in the face of personal pain or discomfort is lionized and appreciated, celebrated. So the benefits of this exchange are many. Some of them you can take to the bank. But the costs are just as many, and mostly not something on a spreadsheet, but rather in your tissue, your sense of well-being, or your mobility. Whatever your expression, without being fully able to use your body and its intelligence, you do not have your complete tool set. So we go until our bodies break or become diseased, and then as a society, we seek cures, as if <laughs> trillions of dollars of research will undo lifetimes of ignoring our bodies and ourselves. We say an ounce of provision is worth a pound of cure, but we don't fund or research that way. So the costs are material. The disruptions to our lives and those we love are constant, insidious, and disastrous. We operate at partial function without the full use of our bodies. Um, we are often trading off literally being present because we think we're making do. So once you imagine a world where none of this was true, oh, I got ahead. Oh, well, here's the direct costs. I got way ahead. I can just stand here and check you out instead of read my stuff. Thanks. <laughs> Cool. <clears throat> All right. Enough of the break in the middle of mine. That was fun. I've actually, I'm not used to being ahead of my slides. So imagine a world where none of this is true, where each person's well-being is both an individual and collective priority, where the focus is on optimized instead of making do. What becomes possible when all the effort to manage our aches and pains, physically and emotionally, are available to accomplish our highest aspirations? Well, you're going to love this part. <clears throat> it starts with putting yourself first. Listening not to your ego or those desires others implanted in you, but being in touch with your authentic, true self. And those desires only you generate. Your tissue wants to be healthy. Feed it and move it right, and it heals without intervention. And when you do, you know what works for you. There's no rationalization or thinking about it. <clears throat> I suggest you have to reprioritize yourself, starting with listening to your body. That means noticing the signals that your body gives you. And at first, the news will be bad, like, ouch, and why haven't you been paying attention to me, you jerk? But it's been waiting all your life to help you. And when you respond with putting your well-being first, so will it. And on whether you use the technique I do, which is resistance, flexibility, strength training, or something else, the real question becomes, on your to-do list, are you on it? Do you schedule your time and attention for your well-being first? And if not, well, why not? Really, why not? People who do, will no other people then notice and start to be uncomfortable with them. Like if you're the only person in this bar not having a drink, the drinkers are checking you out, right? <clears throat> your unwillingness to accept the normal accommodations that have these costs will be noticed and criticized. Even in humor, it's still criticism. Of course, some people will think it's really cool and want to know what's going on with you. The choice is not simple, <clears throat> nor is it easy, but the costs and consequences of following the cultural norm add up, and one day something in your body or mind will break down in a way that demands the rest of your life stop. And you all know someone for whom this is true. Even if it's just a hip or knee being replaced, that reorders your, your life and that of all the people around you. So if you knew that you could eliminate that pain in your back by not eating bacon for 10 weeks, would you? Right, no, there you go. 
And if you make the choice, you're going to face challenges because habits are hard to change. People will sanction you, and you will come to face whatever it is you've been avoiding about yourself. And believe me, everybody's avoiding something about themselves. So then, once you feel better, you get a few degrees of mobility back, you'll be pretty sure you can kick the world's ass because it feels really good. And your priorities change, and feeling great starts a virtuous cycle where the next pain is another opportunity to have life work better. And the sources of those pains, how you accommodate those compromises you've been suffering just to go along and get along, are going to be become intolerable. Things you were stepping over, like how your children are mean to each other, or your company doesn't actually fulfill its mission statement and how it treats customers or employees, will be things you won't tolerate. Your intolerance will be compelling in a visceral way, because when something literally makes you ill, it's kind of hard to ignore. And unlike your efforts to satisfy social norms, those goals, behaviors you take on that are in alignment with the wisdom of your body provides are guaranteed to satisfy you. You will not arrive at the end of your life wishing you had done X or Y instead. In the moment, however daunting the circumstances, you will be doing something you intuitively know is right for you. And that old saw about serving others even more th is even more true, because when you are putting your well-being first, you'll be more productive and more fun and able to engage in the very activities that better serve the others in your life. And you'll be able to address those things you previously tolerated and accommodated. So, this is the insides coming up, folks. <clears throat> I'm not offering myself to help you, but it doesn't matter how you do it. And of course, I'm enthused and passionate about the work I do with resistance, flexibility, strength. So whenever you next make a to-do list, put yourself on it and then transfer that to your calendar like it's an appointment that will cost you something if you don't. Because I promise you, it will. <laughs>